In this clip, we will show how to derive the variance of an OLS estimator of a slope. So we'll start by stating the assumptions uh, on the basis of which we work. The first one is that this linear model, yi equals beta naught plus beta 1 times xi plus ui, that this is the regression model. We have four further assumptions which you have all seen uh, on previous occasions and in this case we will need the fifth assumption that the variance of the error term u conditional on x is equal to sigma squared for all error terms. And we have constant variance or homoscedasticity. So you will also remember the definition of our OLS slope estimator. Here is already the version that relates the beta 1 hat to the true beta 1 and the error terms amongst others. You will have seen this equation before. The main feature of this equation and why it is of use is that we can understand that beta 1 hat is a function of this ui which is the random variable and from which our OLS estimator beta 1 hat inherits the property of being a random variable. So beta 1 hat is a random variable because it is a function of the ui. Ui's are unobserved error terms. So for the for the following we will assume that all the values for xi are fixed. Now xi could be a random variable as well but we will just work on the assumption that we consider these as fixed values or in other words we condition on these values. So what we want is the variance of beta 1 hat. That makes sense because beta 1 hat is a random variable. Now it will be the variance of the right hand side of our equation for beta 1 hat. So we'll just say the variance of beta 1 plus the sum of xi minus x bar times ui divided by sstx. Now recall a number of rules with respect to variances. So if we ha want to calculate the variance of c plus z, where c is a constant and z is a random variable, then we know that this is the same as the variance of z because c doesn't have a variance. The variance of c times z, we can take out the c but we need to square it. So that would be the same as c squared times the variance of z. Now these are the rules we're going to apply. For starters, the equivalent of that constant c is our beta 1. That's a fixed value, although we don't know it, but it's not a random variable, so it will just drop. It will not contribute to the variance. Now we are left with the variance of our random variable and a factor. So it's something like the c. So what shall we treat as the c? Let's start with this one, the sstx in the denominator. So we'll need to take it out and square it. So we get 1 over sstx, but squared, times the variance of everything that's left. That's the ui, our random variable, and this term sum of xi minus x bar. So we have sum of xi minus x bar times ui. Just to make it notationally easier, we will now call this xi minus x bar di, the distance of xi from its average x bar. It's just a notational thing. It gets less messy. So what we now need to refer to is another sort of variance rule. If you have the variance of z1 plus z2, where both of them are random variables, then this is the same as the sum of the two variances if and only if the two random variables z1 and z2 are independent. Okay, so that's very important. And this is where our assumption uh, 2 will now come into play. So with this in mind we will rewrite the previous line just slightly differently. We'll just take apart the sum. So we'll have the variance of d1 times u1 plus d2 times u2 and so forth all the way up to un times dn. All right, so that's just writing the sum out in summons. So now Given our assumption 2, the uh, random sampling, we can write that as the sum of the variances. Here we go. So we have the sum of 
the variances of uh, di times ui. So now we need to uh, further see how we can simplify it. So we have lots of variance di times ui terms here. Now we can take the di out. It only involves x's, which are considered fixed, but we need to square it according to the previous rule we applied. And then we are left with the variance of ui and that's sigma squared as per assumption 5. So we'll have di squared times sigma squared here. Now we have n of these terms, so we can uh, use that result. So we have 1 over sstx squared times, and now we have d1 squared times sigma squared plus d2 squared times sigma squared all the way to dn squared times sigma squared. And now this will uh, simplify somewhat. We can basically factor out the sigma squared and then we get the sum of the di squareds. And the sum of the di squareds is of course nothing else but the SSTX, the sum of squared totals. Given the definition of di, then we can cancel out one of those and we are left with sigma squared over SSTX, the sum of squared total of x. So what have we done here? We have derived the variance of beta 1 hat, always recognizing this is a random variable due to the presence of ui. We then needed to know what the variance of ui was, that's with sigma squared, and we ended up with the result we just derived.